Section 3. How to Win People to Your Way of Thinking Chapter 1. You Can't Win an Argument Try to see things from the other person's perspective and understand their motivations and needs. Avoid arguments and focus on finding areas of agreement and common ground. Appeal to people's self-interest and show them how your ideas or suggestions will benefit them. Encourage people to come up with their own ideas and solutions, rather than imposing your own. Use questions and get people to talk about their own experiences and ideas, which can help to build rapport and create a sense of shared understanding. You can't win an argument. You can't because if you lose it, you lose it, and if you win it, you lose it. If you want to gather honey, don't kick over the beehive. The only way to get the best of an argument is to avoid it. Chapter 2. A Sure Way of Making Enemies and How to Avoid It Criticizing others or pointing out their faults can cause them to become defensive and resentful. Instead, focus on finding something positive to say or complimenting them in some way. Avoid arguments and confrontations, as they rarely lead to productive outcomes and can damage relationships. Refrain from telling people what to do or giving unsolicited advice, as this can be seen as patronizing or disrespectful. Show respect for other people's opinions, even if you disagree with them, and try to see things from their perspective. Recognize and accept responsibility for your mistakes and apologize when necessary. Any fool can criticize, condemn, and complain, and most fools do. But it takes character and self-control to be understanding and forgiving. Remember that other people may be totally wrong, but they don't think so. Don't condemn them. Any fool can do that. Try to understand them. Only wise, tolerant, exceptional people even try to do that. Chapter 3. If you're wrong, admit it. Admitting when you are wrong can be difficult, but it is important to do so in order to maintain integrity and credibility. Acknowledging your mistakes and apologizing can help to diffuse tense situations and prevent conflicts from escalating. Refusing to admit when you are wrong can damage relationships and lead to resentment and mistrust. Admitting your mistakes can actually increase your credibility and make others more likely to trust and respect you. When apologizing, it is important to be sincere and take responsibility for your actions, rather than making excuses or shifting blame. When you're wrong, admit it quickly and emphatically. If you are going to prove anything, don't let anybody know it. Do it so subtly, so adroitly, that no one will feel that you are doing it. Apologizing does not always mean that you are wrong and the other person is right. It just means that you value your relationship more than your ego. Chapter 4. A Drop of Honey A little bit of kindness can go a long way in building strong and lasting relationships. Expressing appreciation and gratitude can help to boost morale and increase motivation and productivity. Understanding others' perspectives and acknowledging their needs and concerns can help to build trust and rapport. The expression one wears on one's face is far more important than the clothes one wears on one's back. We are interested in others when they are interested in us. Chapter 5. The Secret of Socrates People are more likely to be persuaded by their own ideas than by someone else's. Asking questions can help to uncover underlying motives and desires, which can provide insights into how best to persuade or influence someone. The only way on earth to influence other people is to talk about what they want and show them how to get it. Any fool can try to defend his or her mistakes, and most fools do, but it gives one a feeling of nobility to admit one's mistakes. Knowledge is power, but it is only potential power. It becomes power only when, and if, it is organized into definite plans of action and directed to a definite end. Chapter 6. The Safety Valve in Handling Complaints Complaints are often rooted in legitimate concerns or frustrations and should be taken seriously. When someone complains, it's important to listen carefully and empathetically without becoming defensive or dismissive. When addressing a complaint, it's important to focus on the underlying issue rather than getting caught up in the details or assigning blame. The customer is always right. Chapter 7. How to Get Cooperation The most effective way to get others to cooperate with you is to show them how doing so will benefit them. People are not interested in you, 
They are not interested in me. They are interested in themselves. Morning, noon, and after dinner. Chapter 8. A Formula That Will Work Wonders For You The four-step formula for showing appreciation. 1. Begin with praise and honest appreciation. 2. Call attention to people's mistakes indirectly. 3. Talk about your own mistakes before criticizing the other person. And 4. Ask questions instead of giving direct orders. Chapter 9. What Everybody Wants All people crave recognition and the feeling of importance, regardless of their age, gender, or social status. The deepest principle in human nature is the craving to be appreciated. Every person you meet is superior to you in some way. In that, you can learn of him. Section 4. Be a leader. How to change people without giving offense or arousing resentment. Chapter 1. If you must find fault, this is the way to begin. Begin with praise and sincere appreciation. This opens the listener up to receive criticism more positively. Be specific about the issue at hand and explain how it affects the person and others. Use I statements instead of you statements to avoid sounding accusatory. Offer practical suggestions for improvement and encourage the person to take action. Show your confidence in their ability to make positive changes. End on a positive note, reaffirming your confidence in the person's overall abilities. Chapter 2. How to Criticize and Not Be Hated for It Begin with praise or honest appreciation. Use the word and instead of but to connect the positive and negative aspects of a situation. Mention the person's mistakes indirectly and give them a chance to save face. End with praise and encourage improvement. Chapter 3. Talk about your own mistakes first. Talking about your own mistakes can help you avoid offending others when you need to point out their faults. People are more likely to accept criticism if it's delivered in a non-threatening way. And by admitting your own mistakes first, you can create a safe and non-judgmental space for the other person to also admit their mistakes. Admitting your own mistakes is not a sign of weakness, but rather a sign of humility and honesty, which can earn you more respect and trust from others. Chapter 4. No one likes to take orders. Avoid giving direct orders or commands, and instead give suggestions or offer choices to others. People are more likely to cooperate and feel valued if they are given the opportunity to make their own decisions rather than being told what to do. Chapter 5. Let the other person save face. Avoid criticizing others in public as it can damage relationships and undermine cooperation. Always show respect, empathy, and understanding towards the other person. The desire to excel is usually a healthy one. But it becomes unhealthy when we try to surpass others at the cost of humiliating or belittling them. That's when winning becomes losing. Chapter 6. How to Spur People on to Success Most people have untapped potential, and they can achieve great things if they are motivated and encouraged properly. People are more likely to succeed when they are doing something they enjoy. Show appreciation for people's efforts. Give people a sense of purpose. Encourage people to think for themselves. Use positive reinforcement. Set high expectations. Chapter 7. Give the dog a good name. People's behavior can be influenced by how they perceive themselves and how others perceive them. Therefore, giving someone a positive reputation can encourage them to live up to it. Chapter 8. Make the fault seem easy to correct. Presenting a problem or mistake in a way that seems insurmountable or overwhelming will only make them more resistant to making changes. One way to make a fault or mistake seem easy to correct is to break it down into smaller, more manageable parts. Instead of focusing on the negative aspects of the problem, one should focus on the positive aspects of the solution, highlighting how easy and straightforward it will be to implement. Be empathetic and understanding when presenting a problem or mistake to someone else. By showing that you understand their position and are willing to work with them to find a solution, you are more likely to gain their cooperation and support. Chapter 9. Making people glad to do what you want. Motivate people to do what you want by appealing to their own self-interests. Focus on the benefits that the person will receive rather than the benefits to you. Give the person a choice so they feel empowered and invested in the decision.